Hello to you. Happy Sunday. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. It is time to track the tropics and we have a lot to talk about. Of course, we've now entered the portion of hurricane season where things usually start to get busier, ramp up, get more active mid to late August and especially the month of September. So even though we don't have anything going on for the Houston area, tropics wise, there's some activity out there. So we've got some stuff to talk about. Let's go ahead and first start off with Hurricane Aaron. Of course, yesterday was the big day where we had huge news with Aaron. It went through what we call a rapid intensification. That's where you have a hurricane or tropical system basically strengthen at least 35 miles per hour within less than 24 hours. So Aaron did a lot more than that. Hurricane Aaron intensified from a category one hurricane Friday to a category five hurricane by Saturday in less than 24 hours. So that is a super rapid, super large intensification in a short period of time. So of course it was a monster cat five yesterday, kind of went through what we call an eye wall replacement cycle, some restructuring. So it did weaken a bit to a four last night. And at this point it's down to a category three, but it is still considered a major hurricane because by the way, major hurricane is category three or greater. So it is still a a large and dangerous hurricane out there in the Atlantic. Good news for Houston and for the majority of the U.S. staying far away from Houston, but a closer approach to the U.S. East Coast, especially Wednesday evening and Thursday, will mean the threat for some big waves and a high rip currents risk. I think it's going to make its closest approach to the U.S. likely in the Carolinas Wednesday evening, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. But right now, here is the current spot, current location for Hurricane Aaron. It is slightly weaker, but still a major Category 3 hurricane passing now to the north of Haiti and the Dominican Republic and getting close to the Turks and Caicos Islands and to southeastern parts of the Bahamas. That's where we have tropical storm warnings now in place. Once again, it's for the Turks and Caicos and for the southeastern Bahamas. So what does that mean? That means wind gusts or sustained wind that could be anywhere from 39 to 73 miles per hour. Also, those outer rain bands, very heavy rain could lead to some flash flooding. And of course, we're talking about the big waves and the potential for those life threatening rip currents. So conditions going downhill for those spots over the next 24 to 36 hours. Current location for Hurricane Aaron, 21.7 north, 68.5 west. This is as of the latest 4 p.m. advisory pressure around 946 millibars and maximum sustained winds, which by the way, were around 160 miles per hour around this time yesterday, now down to 125 miles per hour. So it has gotten somewhat weaker, but it is still a category three still close to Puerto Rico and getting closer to Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And it is moving to the West Northwest around 13 miles per hour. So it is going to take more of a curve to the north as we go through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That will keep it from making direct contact with the US East Coast, but it will make a fairly close approach on Wednesday and Thursday to the Carolinas. And that's when we could start to see some of those big time waves and a higher rip current risk. Notice it stays a major hurricane through the middle of the week down to a category two by Thursday afternoon as it's passing by Bermuda. And then it is still a category two by Friday afternoon with 100 mile per hour wind. So this thing is going to stay fairly strong and powerful for much of the upcoming work in school week. Our Fox weather tropical model showing a very impressive looking hurricane here at 2 p.m. on Tuesday, close to the southeastern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. That's why those tropical storm warnings are out. So heavy rain, strong winds there, making its closest approach likely to the Carolinas by Wednesday night, Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Notice it is kind of just offshore there. So that's why we are thinking some heavy rain and some big waves could impact some of those Carolina beaches. So so certainly not the best beach time by the middle of the week up around the Carolinas. But thank goodness it's not going to make landfall. It is going to stay offshore, but it's going to get close enough to cause some potential impacts. Starting to roll away from the U.S. by Friday and Saturday. Now, 
how big or how large could those waves get? Well, notice as it gets closer to the Carolinas, these wave heights are increasing close to 20 feet by Thursday morning. In fact, I'll stop the clock here around 8 a.m. Thursday and notice right around the Carolina coast, we're talking about waves around 15 to 20 feet. So that could cause some issues, certainly. So that is going to be, I think, the biggest threat from Hurricane Aaron for the U.S. And of course, the threat for the beach erosion, those rip currents. So there will be multiple threats, even though this hurricane will remain offshore. All right, that's a look at Aaron, but what else do we have to worry about out there in the tropics? Well, thank goodness we're quiet across the Gulf. We do have another system right off the Carolina coast with a very low 10% chance for potential development over the next couple of days. Right now, models are indicating that the threat for anything developing here likely goes away by Monday because conditions kind of become unfavorable for development. So I don't think we have a lot to worry about there. However, there's one other system that we are now monitoring. This is yet another tropical wave that rolled off the west coast of Africa. It is fairly disorganized at this point. It's in the eastern Atlantic, basically a big blob of disorganized showers and storms. However, it is going to be moving into a more favorable environment for development as it tracks to the west northwest around 15 to 20 miles per hour. So at this point, there is a low chance for a tropical depression or a tropical storm to pop up on us over the next week. Chance over the next few days, 0%. But over the next seven days, that 20% chance that we had earlier today has jumped up to a 30% chance, so a slightly better chance that we could have yet another tropical depression, tropical storm, and maybe eventually a hurricane developing in the eastern Atlantic, rolling to the west, northwest, and once again, maybe towards the end of the week, impacting some of those Caribbean islands. After that, still too early to say if it would continue west and head into the Gulf or whether it's going to take a turn north like Aaron did, but we will be watching it closely and updating you if anything becomes a potential threat, of course, for our area or for any area for that matter. All right, let's switch over to our Saharan dust map. And of course, dust has been limiting a lot of this tropical activity for the first few months of our hurricane season. The dark brown indicates where we have the thicker dust out there across the Atlantic basin. But the last week or two, we've been seeing some larger breaks in that thicker Saharan dust. Of course, that dusty air is dry air and it helps to limit tropical development. But when you start seeing more breaks in that thick dust, that allows these systems to get an opportunity to intensify and hang around a little longer. So we are seeing more of those breaks and we will likely start to see more of these tropical waves rolling off of the west coast of Africa and surviving a little bit longer out there. So that means a higher chance that we could have more tropical action messing with us over the coming weeks. So Definitely something to keep an eye on. If we get a tropical system to develop, there's certainly plenty of warm water to work with all across the Gulf, the Atlantic, the Caribbean. Water temps in the 80s, really middle to upper 80s for the, almost the entire area. So that is super warm water that's going to help to potentially fuel these tropical systems. So we will have to keep an eye on things and watch it very close and let you know if we see anything to be concerned about. For the rest of August, we do have an elevated chance for these tropical systems developing. Highest shot will be around the Central Atlantic, Western Atlantic, a more likely chance, and even an elevated threat in the Gulf. You see that two out of four risk for a big chunk of the Gulf. Of course, September 10th is the peak of hurricane season and September usually historically a very active period across the Atlantic, Caribbean and at the uh, Gulf of, of America. So we are going to be dealing with a threat for potentially a lot of activity through September and even into the first few weeks of October. Typically, once we get towards the end of October and into November, that's when things kind of start to settle down a little bit. But we've got to get through a very active period, really this next month, mid-August to mid-September, we are expecting the potential for maybe several tropical systems forming. Hopefully they stay away from the Houston area and from the rest of the US and anywhere really. But of course, that usually doesn't happen. We usually have at least one or two systems mess with us. So we'll be keeping a close eye on things as we get you through this most active portion of our hurricane season. So take this time while things are quiet to go over your 
insurance, make sure you have the coverage that is best for you and your family, and also make sure you have the proper emergency hurricane gear that you need before a tropical system approaches. Now is the best time to do it while it's quiet so you don't have to scramble at the last minute. Well, that's your tropical update for today. We'll continue to keep you updated on Hurricane Aaron and anything else out there that could impact us. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.